So Peter, I turn the floor to you. I should point out it's three o'clock in the morning here. So given that COVID has changed the speed at which we need to think and act, I'll pose some rather difficult questions and generalizations to push our thinking uh, well beyond business as usual. COVID's exposed the complex interface between science, policy and politics, and frankly, not all as well. The properties of this interface are subject to a major study INSA is leading in 100 countries to explore why the effectiveness of this interface has varied so much during the pandemic. If science is to work best for global good, issues across the critical domains of the international science policy interface need to be addressed. Natural and social sciences and technologies are central to many questions on the international agenda, particularly those related to sustainability. But structures at the UN across agencies and indeed within many member states are not well equipped for science to have its best and effect, most effective input. Science itself has to change. It's inefficient. Do we really need three million scientific papers a year, many of which are never read? Individual and institutional incentives set by governments, funders, agencies, and universities drive this culture, which is reinforced by the inherent uh, drive many scientists have to build their own symbolic capital. The same inefficiencies exist in international science. Duplicative activities are often driven by agency and institutional egos. The repetitive of conferences, duplicative organizations, funding organizations to often duplicate rather than coordinate and set their focus without how they might fit into an overall strategy. The International Science Council has been trying to help address this uh, latter issue of promoting funder collaboration and coordination. I think it's fundamental to really accelerating progress. Fragmentation also affects how science and policy come together to address global challenges. Discussions have tended to focus on roadmaps for the SDGs and, and often a rather naive belief that technology alone will, will, focus, will solve a particular SDG. Treating them as separate activities with separate Solutions, they're not. They're part of an integrated complex system. There are hints of change. The discussion in last year's Global Sustainability Development Report of focusing on six integrated transformations is a step in the right direction. But now we have different groups proposing different transformation agendas. Again, a wasteful effort. There's been little consideration about how science can help policymakers identify priorities in this landscape. Yet we know from work in, uh, in domestic studies that it's the most important step in building a relationship between science and policy. Inks has taken the lead here, working with a number of policy partners and exploring how this approach could be used to improve progress on the SDGs. But the importance of this step key to good policy making is largely ignored in favor of the focus on roadmaps. The United Nations Development Program has started a very important project with the International Science Council, which is convening a broad range of disciplinary inputs to move human development from a narrow to a much more holistic understanding of human potential and well-being. I explored this, ex uh, this experiment because it shows a willingness to set a common agenda uh, between policy and science, rather than policy alone setting the agenda. Evidentiary brokerage is key. It has two elements. Firstly, evidentiary synthesis itself is a complex skill. We have learned in COVID that the range of disciplines needed in the room is broad. It's not necessarily the academician deeply vested in reduction of science that is needed, Rather, it's those transdisciplinarians with the skills to listen to other disciplines and epistemologies. Secondly, it needs the skills to integrate those inputs into policy uh, advice. No single science has the answers. Brokerage needs humility and diplomacy. It needs to be sure that the questions and, uh, and, and answers are aligned. It must be acknowledge the uncertainties and the limits of science. 
But as we've seen, too often scientists have no formal process to interact in ways that are most helpful. Institutions of science advice are needed. Three years ago, I spoke at the STI forum about the lack of effective scientific input into the function of the United Nations system beyond technical agencies. Science is delegated to UNESCO, where it focuses primarily on member state capacities and to technical agencies rather than being engaged in the corridors of power and diplomacy. The major group system tries its best, but its abilities and access are limited. I thought the answer might lie in a true science advisory mechanism reporting to the UN Secretary General, not the unfunded and rather cosmetic mechanism previously established. A small unit in New York is essential, but I would suggest that the source of ensuring balanced evidentiary synthesis must come from the diversity of the global science community, not just a few favoured friends. The reality is that the UN needs structured access to the best experts from around the world. The science community must unite into a single global voice for science to coordinate and serve in that evidentiary, synthetic and brokerage role. Otherwise, we will end up making policy makers into scientific referees. But this cannot be effective unless the UN promotes all countries, irrespective of developmental state, to have an institutional framework to ensure scientific input into their own domestic policy making and also into their diplomacy. Something again recommended by the 2017 STI Forum. Sustainability, societal resilience and human development, the three keys to our future are all encapsulated in the SDGs. None are possible without better incorporation without, of science into international affairs. But it's not just implementation, which has been the focus of most activity, but into the actual identification of those key policy actions that would make a difference. Let me finish with a simple question. Where were the broader dimensions of science in the preparation of the international pandemic plan? One that really never considered human, diplomatic, and other dimensions. Social science, risk science, behavioral science, I mean, many others were missing in action. What's been the price? Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter, for those challenging um, and indeed systemic questions um, that I think we do need to ask ourselves. You raise many important issues. I think that these are also challenges for international organizations, international scientific organizations like those represented here, both the International Science Council, the Inter-Academy Partnership, which was mentioned by Dr. McNutt, and of course also um, the Global Young Academy, who we have with us today. And Dr. Nkanza, I'd like now to turn the floor to you.